Determine the anchoring force required to hold in place the conical nozzle attached to the end of the laboratory sink faucet, shown in figure 5.31, when the water flow rate is 10 gallons per minute. The nozzle weight is 0.2 pounds. The nozzle inlet and exit inside diameters are 0.6 and 0.2, respectively. The nozzle axis is vertical, and the axial distance between sections 1 and 2 is 1.2 inches. The pressure at section 1 is 68 so the first step we do is draw our control volume, which we've done right here, and we also included our coordinate system with positive K going in the upward direction. And we then listed our pressure forces. So we have P1 times A1 acting down across this top right here, and we have P2A2 acting up in this section right here. And then we included our body forces, which was weight of the water right here acting down, with the nozzle acting down up there, and then we have the support reaction force, TZ, acting down. And then we also list our givens right here. Next step was to consider the forces on the control volume and write them in vector form. And we just have the forces and the flexes in the K direction because we don't have anything in the I direction in this problem. So we started with listing our body forces, which was the weight of the water and the weight of the nozzle, and they're both negative because they're acting in the downward direction. And then we have P1 times A1, which is pressure times area, and the first one is negative because it's acting in the negative direction, and the second one is positive because it's acting in the positive direction, as you can tell from our picture. Then we have our support force, which is negative because it's also acting in the downward direction. And then next we did the, to do the exact same thing with the flexes that we do with the forces. So we look at control surface one, and we have rho times V1 times Q1, and they're both negative because um, the velocity is going downward, and then Q1 is negative because it's inflow. That's always negative. And that equals rho times V1 times Q because the negatives cancel out. Then we look at control surface two, and we have rho times negative U2, acting down again, times positive Q this time because it's outflow and positive um, outflow is always positive. And then that equals negative rho times V2 times Q. And then the next step is to sum up the forces in that direction. So we have negative TZ minus weight of the water minus weight of the nozzle minus negative P1 times A1 plus P2 times A2 equals rho times V1Q minus rho times V2Q. Next, we solve for all our unknowns. The first one is rho times Q, and rho is 1.94 slugs per feet cubed, and that's um, found in the book. And you multiply that by Q, which is 10 gallons per minute, and then you multiply that by the by conversion factor, which is feet cubed over 7.48 gallons, and that's also from the book. And then we multiply that by one minute over 60 seconds to get everything in slugs per second. And the number came out to be 0 0.0432 slugs per second. Then we found V1, which is Q over A1, and Q, like from before, was 10 gallons per minute. We multiplied that by 12 inches over feet squared. And then we divided that by area 1, which is pi times um, R squared. And since they gave us the diameter, we did 0.6 over 2 to get the radius, and then squared that. And then we multiplied that by 7.48 gallons per feet cubed times 60 seconds per minute to get the answer in feet per second, and the number was 11.4 feet per second. And we did the same thing with V2, except for this time we replaced 0.6 inches with 0.2 because that was the second diameter. And then we got 102 feet per second. And then we did P1 times A1. Pressure was 68 pounds per inch squared. We'll try that by the area, which is the same as the area up here. And you use um, 0.6 because that's what the first diameter was and we got 19.2 pounds. Then for um, P2 times A2, it's actually zero because pressure two is zero because it's gauge pressure. Next we found the weight of the water, which was rho times G times volume of the water. And then the um, equation to find that was found in the book and it was pi over 12 times D1 squared plus D2 squared plus D1 times D2 times H. And we multiply that by rho times G. And then we just fill that in 
So we have 1.94 slugs per feet cubed, which is rho, times gravity, which is 32.2 feet over second frame, pi over 12, and then you multiply that by this equation, 0.6 squared plus 0.2 squared plus 0.6 times 0.2. You multiply by that, by the height, which is 1.2 inches, and then multiply that by a conversion factor, 12 inches. The third power. <laughs> The number we got was 0 0.0059 pounds. Then we plug in all of these into this equation right here. And the weight of the nozzle was given to us. So the only thing left we have is what we're solving for, which is um, the reaction of the energy direction, which we found right here to be 17.5.